Hi, my name is Rita Yabe and I'm a Surgical Oncology Fellow at MD Anderson Cancer Center. On behalf of Dr. Brian Badgewell and my co-authors, I'd like to thank Jax for the opportunity to discuss our work. Malignant bowel obstruction is the most common indication for palliative surgical consultation and occurs in up to 70% of patients with carcinomatosis. However, the indications and benefits of palliative surgery for these patients have not been well studied or defined. One of the reasons for this is that traditional endpoints, such as morbidity and survival, do not capture the primary goals of palliative surgery, relieving symptoms and improving quality of life. Without a meaningful outcome measure, it becomes very difficult to identify variables associated with prognosis. To address this, our group previously designed and psychometrically validated a patient-reported outcome measure, the MD Anderson Symptom Inventory for Gastrointestinal Obstruction, or MDASI GIO. In this study, we built upon this work by using this outcome measure to prospectively evaluate patients with malignant bowel obstruction treated with and without surgery. We enrolled 125 patients of whom 88 were managed non-surgically and 33 were managed surgically during their index admission. These patients took the 24-item MDASI GIO at enrollment and at seven other time points for up to 90 days. On paper, the surgical and non-surgical patients look pretty similar though the non-surgical patients were more likely to have carcinomatosis on imaging. You will notice that palliative care, pain medicine, and chaplaincy consultations were obtained for 30, 17, and 15% of patients respectively within the first month of enrollment. What this tells us is that even at our large tertiary cancer center, there is a lot of room for improvement and we need to do better. Malignant bowel obstruction is a multidisciplinary disease and the involvement of palliative and supportive care specialties should almost be reflexive, not something seen in a minority of patients. When we looked at the inventory results, patients managed surgically tended to have higher mean symptom scores, although the only scores with an effect size of 0.5 or higher were interference with general activity and work. In these cases, non-operative management was associated with less interference. You can see that this discrepancy remained fairly consistent over time, and this is not unexpected. Recovering from a big operation will undoubtedly interfere with one's ability to work or carry out daily activities. However, we also saw improved survival in patients treated surgically. On multivariate analysis, surgical management and subsequent receipt of chemotherapy were associated with improved survival. Now, selection bias obviously comes into play heavily here. We wouldn't be offering surgery to patients unless we thought it could really benefit them in a meaningful way. However, these findings do suggest that surgery may be beneficial in appropriately selected patients. Of note, these results do differ from those of a forthcoming clinical trial. Much of this can probably be explained by differences in patient selection used in that study. And again, survival really is not the most important or relevant outcome when studying patients with malignant bowel obstruction. One limitation of our study is the length of the MDASI GIO itself. Although it is only two pages, the inventory may be too burdensome for patients with the most severe symptoms to complete. This is reflected in the 37 patients who declined participation in the study due to feeling overwhelmed by their situation or condition. With consideration for future studies, we propose using the mean physical interference score, which encompasses symptom interference with work, activity, and walking as a patient-reported outcome measure that can be rapidly assessed and is less onerous than the 24-item MDASI GIO. The ease of completing a three-item inventory would also facilitate its use in multi-institutional studies, ideally encompassing both community and academic practice settings. We hope you enjoyed our paper and that our findings will help inform patient expectations for symptom control and quality of life after surgical and non-surgical management of malignant bowel obstruction. Thank you again.